generation of people and communities. My name is Gigi Tech, so I get the opportunity to co-lead this amazing ministry with my husband. Do me a favor this morning. Why don't you like, share, and tell somebody to come on over to YouTube and watch service this morning. We would love to have them join us. If you are a visitor, why don't you fill out a guest card for us this morning? And then just share about the experience that you have had. I'm going to move on over to the side of the worship team. Take it away.
virtually see you. I hope you're excited to see me virtually. Listen, uh, I'm springing your announcements this week. Uh, listen, I'm so excited that we are actually beginning uh, Bible study again. Corporate Bible study will resume. We left off talking about who God is, and we're going to keep talking about uh, who God is. And so I want everybody to make sure that you're in front of your computers, your laptops, 7 p.m. this Tuesday at the Zoom link here as we continue learning about our Father. Listen, I'm also excited to let you know. I know. You may be thinking or you may be excited. I don't know. Don't tell. That uh, I have not spoke in a very long time. I have been blessed by everybody that's been filling in and speaking. Let me change that. They're not filling in. They're part of this ministry. They are just speaking. They're not filling speakers. They are speakers. They are teachers. And so I have been blessed by everything uh, that they have been teaching. But listen, I miss you guys. I've been burning. I almost wasn't going to have Isaiah uh, bring his word this week and say, I got this one because God's given me a word. Um, God has encouraged me in the season of my life that even I was kind of like, what's up, God? Um, and he spoke these simple words to me, uh, be still. And so I thought about you guys. I thought about this world. I thought about where we're at. And I said, I think we all need to learn how to be still, how to be faithful and learn to be still in our faith. And so I wanted to bring a series where we're going to preach through every passage in the Bible where we see the words of be still. And we're going to talk about the circumstance and we're going to talk about how our faith should be increased, how our faith will stand in those different situations. Listen, I'm excited. I know you may be thinking, oh Lord, we didn't finish Amos. Relax. We'll be back to Amos. But I want to be obedient to what I felt God telling me. And I want to be obedient to the season and the times give you a word that speaks to who you are and where you are today, that you may have a 2021 that is drastically different uh, than your 2020. Listen, I love you guys. I thank you guys for being here with me. And uh, I want to thank you guys for continuing to support this ministry. Hey, it's giving time. And I know it's online and you may not be able to do your little giving dance or whatever the case may be. And maybe you've already given on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or whenever. But listen, uh, we just want to give you all an opportunity to continue to partner with us and you're giving everything that you guys have given, everything that you guys have sacrificed of your own in the midst of COVID-19 has been able to bless other people. We have sacrificed, you have sacrificed your money so that somebody else uh, may have a joyful holiday or may uh, be able to uh, pay a bill or something or have food on their table. And so I thank you guys for sacrificing and I pray that you guys will continue to trust us, continue to partner with God with his resources so that we may be a better uh, communicator of his love to our community. So listen, it's giving time. The link is below. It's made easy. Uh, I thank you. I love you. And I'll see you guys soon. What's up, Reef City Church? Uh, so excited to be able to join you guys here today virtually. Um, I definitely miss and love all of you guys dearly. Uh, my family says hello. Uh, it was great to be able to with you guys for the holidays. Um, uh, it was such a great moment to be able to worship again with you guys. So I definitely appreciate you guys for that. Um, but Today, I am here to bring the word of God to you. Um, I count it a privilege every time I get to be able to do something like this um, because um, it's a lot of responsibility that goes into this. Um, and so um, I've been praying and studying and reading, um, and I feel like God has given me something good to um, impart to you guys today. So uh, I'm going to pray and then we're going to jump right into it. Uh, Father God, 
thank you so much for um, this time. Thank you for your word um, that illuminates. Um, thank you uh, just for becoming close um, and staying close and always being close to us. Thank you for your grace. Father, I pray um, in this moment that you would just fill my mouth with the words that you would have me speak, um, bring to my remembrance everything that you would like me to say. Uh, Father, I pray that there are open hearts listening and I pray that you glory that um, you would get the glory out of this and your will will be done. And it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right. So um, let's get into this. Um, I'm going to be coming out of first Thessalonians chapter five today. Um, um, I recently read this passage and it really struck me, um, as something that is quite relevant to, um, what we've been dealing with, um, modern day, um, and a lot of things that we've been going, uh, through just, um, as a people, as a church, um, as a country, whatever, um, as Christians, um, it's been, um, uh, quite a year to say the least. Um, it's quite the last couple years, honestly, but, um, 2020 really capped that off with a bang. But, um, I believe that there was purpose in it. Um, as there is purpose in everything that God creates and God brings forth. Um, and so, uh, one of those purposes, um, that I've been hearing a lot and, you know, it really struck me when I heard it was that God was revealing a lot. Um, he revealed a lot of things that were maybe in secret or in hiding, uh, previously. And, um, I, I would have to say that I agree with that. Um, I, I believe that there has been a lot of things revealed this year, this past year, um, that needed to be revealed. And so, um, I'm ultimately grateful for that. Um, though it came through hardship, I'm ultimately grateful. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I think that was revealed was, um, just some things that, um, the church has kind of missed the mark on. And when I say the church, I mean the universal big C church as in Christians everywhere, the Christian body. Um, there's been some things that we missed the mark on. Um, and I believe that one of the th ways that we can kind of get back on track is going back to the word of God, um, because that is where the instruction for how we should live is, um, and so today we're going to look at one of uh, Paul's epistles um, or letters that he wrote to the church of Thessalonica. Um, so just to give you a little background before we read it, um, Paul speaking to, like I said, the church of Thessalonica. Um, this church um, is in a city that is uh, what's called a seaport city. Um, it's basically stationed on a body of water that is heavily trafficked. Um, there's a lot of commerce and a lot of goods that come through, um, a lot of business. Um and also a lot of other people, um, just foreign people who come um, with their own cultures, their own beliefs, their own religious views. Um, and Paul is planting a church in this place. Um, and so because of the uh, variety or the diversity of uh, such a place, because of the business in this uh, area, it, it kind of made for a little bit of a more difficult environment to groom new Christians in. Um, Paul is trying to establish a church in a place that is swirling with a, a bunch of other religious views and a lot of pagan um, religions as well. Um, and so Paul does a lot of equipping and encouraging and motivating in these two letters to uh, the church at Thessalonica. Um, and I think it's really cool because we can make some um, similar, we can draw some similarities um, to our current day time here in America. Um, I'm not saying that the Church of Thessalonica is exactly like America or either whatever. Um, it, I think there are a few similarities that we can draw from in principle and see some of the things that Paul talked about in principle and apply them today. And we'll see the church grow stronger and we'll not only see the church grow stronger, but we'll see our local environments around our churches grow stronger. Because um, I am a firm believer that things prosper when you do them God's way. Um, and so um, not to say that this is a prosperity gospel, but things do prosper when you do them God's way. Now, how they prosper um, may not always look like what you thought. It may not come in the money and the resources. However, things are prospering. Things are bringing are, are being brought to life a lot of times spiritually as well and in other ways. So um, uh, I believe there's some inferences we can draw from this passage um, that we can apply to the modern day church and we can see some real change and real growth in our churches, one, and then our environment as a whole. 
So it's a little quick background. So let's get into the passage. Um, it's First Thessalonians chapter five, verses twelve through twenty-two. We'll read the twenty-two. Um, and um, in this chapter, um, Paul had been talking to um, this church um, about. Uh, being ready for the day of the Lord or Christ's second coming. And um, his main message was basically stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Um, and I love that. Um, it, it's I love that God kind of made uh, uh, help me kind of make that connection. Um, you know, God, God is not just the God of the Old Testament. He's not just the God of the ancient Christianity or first church. He's also the God of modern day. Um, and so he helps me a lot of times draw a lot of um, cultural references and, you know, connections um, between some of the messages of the Bible to now. Um, and so one of those things is that Paul talks about basically staying ready so you don't have to get ready. And um, I can appreciate that um, because um, I think that's such an important message to live as if you know, today is the day that you're going to see Christ and not to say, to, you know, you know, you're going to die or whatever, but just live as if Christ is standing next to you or he's on his way to gather up and see what you've done with what he's left you. And um, I think that's a really awesome message. Um, and I think it's a really awesome message that he was able to impart into this specific church um, that was full of a lot of new converts who were you know, constantly surrounded by a lot of different views and, and religions. Um, so he's talking about, you know, um, being ready. So you have to get ready. And um, he leaves um, about the uh, I call them charges, these 10 charges to this church to um, um, uh, to start to input into their daily lives. Um, and I think these are things that we can do today and we'll see a lot of growth and a lot of change um, spiritually, but then also in other areas um, in our environment. So let's get into it. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 12. Um, and we'll read down about 22. Uh, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you in the Lord and admonish you and to regard them very highly in love because of the work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we exhort you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See to it that no one repays evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good. Always pursue what is good for one another and for all. I love that verse. Uh, rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in everything for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't stifle the spirit. Don't despise prophecies, but test all things. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. And then he kind of leaves with this um, um, kind of salutation that he, he leaves in a couple of different places. But he says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will do it. All right. So that was a mouthful. And there's a lot there. Um, I'm not going to unpack it to the point, you know, I'm not going to exhaust it, but we'll touch on a couple things and then we'll be out of here. All right. So. First charge, uh, verses 12 and 13, um, the first charge that he leaves is to love and respect the leaders and the laborers, love and respect the leaders and the laborers. Um, he says to uh, in, in this version from the Christian Standard Bible version, it says, give recognition to those who labor among you and lead you in the Lord and admonish you and regard them highly in love because of the work. Um, and what this simply is, is saying and one of the things that God, um, the revelation that God gave me from this um, it is simply to um be very simply be respectful and have an appreciation for those who are not only laboring with you, but also leading you. Um, because, and it says because of their work, um, there are plenty of Christians in the body. And I think a lot of times we take on a very individualistic mindset and we feel like maybe we have to save the whole entire world or, you know, um, we see a lot of um, arguments and issues between Christians because of um, smaller, minute details or um, just 
you know, certain practices. Now, I'm not saying not to hold your brothers and sisters accountable, but I think there's a level of respect that a lot of times we lose when we do have these differences in practice. Um, even when the other person might be wrong or we may be wrong, whatever it is, we lose a certain level of respect because it comes down to I need to prove that I'm right and I know more than you or that I'm more spiritual than you. And that's a very individualistic mindset and not a very unifying mindset. And that's not something that God created created us to be. Um, and so um, I, I love this this reminder. Um, it says to to love and respect the leaders and the laborers um, and, and simply because they are doing the same work that you were doing. So for you to not love and not respect those who are doing the same work you are doing, it, it it's very counterproductive for everybody. You know, it doesn't help you. It doesn't help them. So love and respect all of those people who are doing the same work as you based solely off of that. We have to do better as a church. We have to love and respect those who are with us and those who are working with us and those who are leading us. And especially for um, our leaders, um, I, I believe that um, and, and I've been guilty of it, too. So I think we as a generation, this specific generation has lost a certain reverence for leadership. Um, and I think um it's a struggle for me, um, as I think it's a struggle for a lot of people, um, because a lot of times we just don't like to be told what to do. Um, and, you know, that's something that we have to get over because it's it's not about being told what to do. There is somebody that God has appointed and placed over you to care for you. And sometimes in caring for you, they need to give you instruction and they need to admonish you. Um, and so I, I think it's very important that we return to a certain level of reverence for our leadership. Um, I'm sure Pastor Tanks will appreciate that. <laughs> um, because I think that's something that we both agree on. I, we, 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 we've had conversations about that, about how sometimes there's just, there's, there's a lack of respect for leadership. And um, I, I think we need, that is something that we as the body need to be more intentional about. Um, but again, not only just leadership, but those around us who are working with us, um, because we just want to live in a spirit of unity. All right. So the first charge was love and respect the laborers and the leaders. Second charge, hold your brothers and sisters accountable. And so these two kind of go hand in hand for me. Um, I, I think uh, it, it's like I said, these just go hand in hand because if I, if I love you and I respect you, then I, I love you enough to tell you when you may have missed the mark or tell you when you're not on your P's and Q's and you reserve the right as my brother or sister to tell me the same thing. Um, and again, it goes back to this unifying mindset that we want to have, that we have to have, that we've been commanded to have as the body of Christ. So we look in verses 14 and 15, it says, and we exhort you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle. So for those of you who are sitting, those who are sitting on the sideline, if you know somebody who's just sitting on the sideline chilling, who hasn't really been active in trying to forward the kingdom or to push the advancement of the mission of the gospel. Our job is to warn them, <laughs> you know, warn those who are idle, let them know, hey, we got to get moving. Um, we don't have time to sit around and just be um, singular in our faith or uh, uh, selfish in our faith and say, it's my faith and my faith alone. And I don't need to share it with anybody um, that couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, it also says comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See to it that no one repays evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good for one another and for all. And so I more so want to focus on um, this uh the first part of 14 and verse 15 is, is really the parts that's talking about accountability. Um, we talked about warning those who are idle, but then it also says, see to it that no one repays evil for evil to anyone. Um, pursue what is good for one another and for all. Again, going back to um, this, this idea of unity, we have to be unified and care for each other enough to say, hey, it, it revenge is not for us <laughs> you know that's not our thing that's not what we do um we don't repay evil for evil as it says in the in the in the bible um and and in the the overarching thing that i think is needs the most focus is but always pursue what is good for one another and for all 
And so if I always take on this mindset of that, I have to do what is best for you and for everyone at the end of the day, then that's going to stop me from doing a lot of silly things that will cause a lot of arguments. I think a lot of issues and rifts between people come from when we are constantly going back and forth because we want our way. We want what's best for us. We want to win. We want to feel good. And we want all of the positive parts to be on our side. We want we want it to be a win loss. We want it to be we win, you lose. Right. But that's not that's not the way the kingdom is supposed to function. The kingdom is supposed to function in a way that everybody wins. It is a win win situation for everybody. And so at the end of the day, if I'm only seeking to win myself or only put the positive to stack the deck for myself and not have anything for you, then I'm an error. Right. So as the body, I think we have to pay more attention, pay more attention, be more intentional about doing what is best for everybody and not just the people in our small circle or not just for us. Um, uh, I think one of the ways that uh, one of the things that I appreciate the most about um, Reach City Church is that we are um, constantly looking to better people and there are some times where we take we take hits in resources or we take hits in certain areas because we're trying to better someone else um and and, and at the end of the day that's a win-win because one we're fulfilling we're fulfilling the command that god has given we're fulfilling um um a specific instruction from God to help those in need. And obviously on the other than the people who need the help are getting it. And so at the end of the day, uh, those resources can be replenished, right? But sometimes our opportunity to help others may not be, you may not be able to come back around. And so we take, we, I appreciate our leadership in taking, um, you know, if you want to taking the bull by the horns and, and being very intentional about taking care of the people that need the most help. Um, and so I think this is something that that we, again, as an entire body, you can do this personally. It doesn't have to be always through your your um, your, your church. You can do this personally as you see people who need help, help them. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of that simple. Um and, and, and so I, I think that's a really uh, poignant point. Um, and, and that kind of goes into the next couple um, charges. Um, the next couple are encourage the discouraged, help the weak and um, be patient. But these these first two encourage the discouraged and help the weak. Again, we've been charged as as a body to help those around us and to show the love of Christ. And one of the ways that we show the love of Christ is by meeting other people's needs when they need them and especially taking up for those who can't do for themselves um and so um and i think it's interesting that paul puts that in there in a place that is very rich full of resources you know like i said if we go back to that background it was a place that was full of commerce and goods and heavily trafficked by wealthy people and you know that's where i can draw some of the similarities to our time now we're in a country that is very that has a lot of resources um that has a lot of, of money frankly um that and 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 you know though we always may not spend it right we have a lot of resources in this country and yet there are so many people who are in need um and and one of the things and again one of the things that god has charged us with as christians is to help those who are in need and can't do for themselves and so if if we're not looking for every opportunity to do so then we are we're, we're not we're not making the best of our time um again i think it's interesting that that paul put this in here um like i said because it's a place full of wealth honestly um and yet there are still people who are who are going to need the help right um uh it talks about uh being patient so we talked we talked about love and respect the laborers and the leaders we talked about holding your brothers and sisters accountable we talk about encouraging the discouraged helping the weak and the next one is to be patient verse 15 um it says at the end of verse 15 um 
comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. And I, I think this is a great way to round out these first couple charges um, because without the patience, you're not going to be able to do the other stuff. If I don't have patience for all of the differences between the people that working that are working with me um, toward the same goal, but are working with me, but they may do it a certain way that's a little bit different than what I thought. If I don't have patience, I'm not going to be able to work with them. I'm not going to be able to love and respect and appreciate what they are trying to do. If I don't have patience, then I'm not going to be able to understand um, uh, the level of maturity and, and that it takes to be able to receive an admonishment from a leader, right? If I don't have patience, I'm not going to be able to encourage the discouraged because the discouraged are frankly going to annoy me because it's like, why, why are you so sad? Let's figure it out, right? I got issues too. But if I'm not, if I'm not patient, that's my mindset. But if I have patience, I'm able to encourage those who may be down. I'm able to help those who don't have, uh, uh, have it to do for themselves. Um, if I'm, if I, so, so this is really a key important piece to round out some of these other things is that if I'm going to be and show the love of Christ to those around me, whether they are saved or not, I have to have patience. I have to have a God-given patience um, to be able to help all of those people, to be able to respect those that are around me, um, that are working with me. Um, and so, so patience, 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 patience. Be patient with each other. Um, I can't count how many times God has admonished me um, and, and, and I've actually had to turn in that moment. Like I literally was walking away from an opportunity to help someone and God had me turn around and help them. And, and part of it is that I always, you know, I always have this, these dialogues with God and just conversation. I'm like, you know, God, like I would help them, but I just, I don't got it like that to help them, you know? And a lot of times it doesn't take much. It doesn't take abundant resources all the time to help those in need. Sometimes the help that they need is the encouraging words. Sometimes the help they need is you just stopping to ask if they're okay to check on them. Sometimes the help that they need, it may be something monetary. It may be something, some type of resource that they need. But if God is asking you or telling you to do something, he's already equipped you with whatever it is you need to help them. Um, and so, again, we have to have patience enough to care for our brother and sister, but also patience enough to stop and slow down and hear God's voice when he's telling us to go and understand that he's given us what we need to help. All right. So, again, let's go over them. love and respect labors and the leaders. Hold your brothers and sisters accountable. Encourage the discouraged. Help the weak. Be patient. All right. That's five. Six one. Be joyful. Now. This one, um, <laughs> this one, I think is interesting uh, because we're kind of living in a time where it's quite hard to feel joyful, um, to feel happy about anything, and happiness and joy are a little bit different. Uh, but it, we're living in a time where 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 it's it may be hard to have joy um because of like you know all the things different things going on um however um the bible commands us you know paul talks about rejoice always um and i think we as believers can always be in a state of joy or rejoicing um because we understand the value of having christ living inside of us or the spirit of God living inside of us. And so when we have that, there's a different level. There's a different way that we approach life. We approach life from a joyful standpoint of understanding that no matter what actually comes my way, I can find my joy outside of all that I face in my physical day. Um, because the spirit of God resides in me and the spirit of God allows me to have a joy that cannot be taken away by anything um, man made or physical or natural. And so um, it, it's it's again interesting and, and it's very important that we understand this because um, we have to have a have a focus not on um, the things that we're facing or the things that we're struggling with. Now, understand, because uh, I heard some I heard some people kind of 
arguing about this before. And when I say not have a have a, have the right focus or, or not be so focused on the things of this world, that doesn't mean you're not you're not aware of them. You're not concerned about them, that you don't care about them. It doesn't mean that you just throw them to the side as if they aren't there. What it means is what it means is that you are aware and you understand the importance of what you need to do to handle those things. But your focus ultimately is on God and how he's going to provide for you to be able to handle those things. And and even if you may not see right away how he's giving you whatever you need to handle them. Your focus is so much on God and what and who he is that it doesn't even so much matter whatever that situation is. At the end of the day, you know that you are loved by a God who was more powerful than any of that. And so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I face. It doesn't matter what I go through. It doesn't matter if there's a pandemic. It doesn't matter if I lost my job. It doesn't matter if I've lost a child. It doesn't matter if I've lost income. It doesn't matter if if I'm sick. It doesn't matter. None of that matters um, um, because at the end of the day, I know that I have a God who is more powerful than all of that who loves me. Um, and, and so um, this is a way to keep yourself in a spirit of joy always and then understand that when you live from the spirit of joy now again we're, we're going to flow backwards a little bit when i live in the spirit of joy now i can be patient now i can help the weak now i can encourage the discouraged now i can love and respect the laborers and the leaders now i you, you get so th this is the all these things kind of work together um, to 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 create a picture of how we should live our life. So rejoice always, rejoice always, rejoice always, because you have a God that loves you, that cares about you, and not only that, He is more powerful than every situation that you're gonna face ever in your life. All right. Um, so rejoice always again. So we'll go back over and love and respect the laborers. Hold your brothers and sisters accountable. Encourage the discouraged. Help the weak. Be patient. Be joyful. Number seven is pray. Um, this is uh, actually probably the most famous verse out of this passage is First Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray constantly. Pray always. And it's literally just those two words. Pray always. Pray constantly. Um, one of the things that I believe that the church or the body of Christ uh, must, must, must do is be constantly in a spirit of prayer, always be cloaked in prayer, be in prayer about everything because it's, it's literally your source because you're talking, you're talking to God, just as you have to um, have conversations with a boss at work or the leader on a project or whatever it is. You have to communicate with those who have the plan. Right. You have to be able to communicate with those people to understand what needs to be done in the plan, how to do it, all of those things. And so if I'm not in constant communication with the person with the plan, I don't know what the plan is, number one. And number two, I don't know what steps I should be taking to help fulfill this plan or to help carry out this plan. And so, um, th and when I say the church, I don't mean, like I said, not just local churches, not just we need to sit for hours on end and pray in church services. I'm talking about you personally as a Christian, me personally as a Christian, as we, at, you know, personally, we need to pray and always be con in constant communication with the Father and then gather together well, safely, obviously, but gather together and agree in prayer with the Father. Um, but pray always because this is how we get the plan to be able to do and live how he is calling us to live all right um this this it's 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 a simple concept but i think a lot of times we miss it because you know it's not something that we can immediately see physical results from sometimes uh, i know that's been a struggle that was always a struggle for me growing up i struggled with the idea of prayer or with the act of prayer because it was like um Number one, the way I understood it and not so much the way it was taught to me, but the way that I chose to understand it was that I pray and and because people would say, you know, pray until something happens or, you know, uh, um, you know, God responds when you pray. And I'm looking for an audible voice. I'm looking for something to shake in the room or something, you know, and 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 it, as silly as that may have that may have sounded. It took me a long time to get past that and understand that prayer is truly a 
you know, not ethereal, but spiritual experience that um, um, it may not yield the physical results that we're visually looking for right away, but it does yield results, right? Um, if nothing else, it helps to calm my spirit. If nothing else, if the whole situation stays exactly the same, it allows me to be in communication with someone who understands who I am, understands my feelings, understands everything about me, and who actually can do something about the situation, right? Um, you know, uh, uh, it's but there's been kind of a a boom in understand, you know, a, a yeah, a boom in understanding mental health, and one of the things that's been constantly pushed talking about helping to improve mental health. And I agree with this is to be able to communicate your issues and to be able to talk things out and not bottle things up. Well, here's the thing. Um, we have that opportunity and though, you know, God may not physically be sitting next to us, we can always communicate with God about our problems. We can always go to him about our issues, but we always can also go to him about our, our, our successes and the great things that have happened. Um, because number one, he knows all about them, right? And number two, he cares. And number three, he can do something about it, right? And so always be in prayer, always be in prayer. Uh, so we got uh, love and respect, labors and leaders, Hold your brothers accountable, encourage the discouraged, help the weak, be patient, be joyful, pray. Um, number eight is fear God, right? Fear God. Um, in um, verse, uh, we'll go to verse 19 and 20, um, verse 19 through 22. Um, it talks about don't stifle the spirit, don't despise prophecies, but test all things. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Um, and so I kind of wrap that up in the idea of fear God, um, because if we have and fear God in the in the sense of reverence, if we are reverencing God, then, you know, and we're reverencing who he is, then then, then it. It will keep us from stifling the spirit when it's when, when he's trying to relay something to us through the spirit. Right. Um, don't despise prophecies. Again, if I understand and revere God in the way that I should, I understand the importance of prophecy. Um, and then I also understand how it's supposed to be done correctly. Right. Um, and we're not going to get into attention on that, but we understand how it's supposed to be done correctly. So I won't despise it. I won't stay stray away from it. I won't try to act like it's not there or that it's not real or it's not good because I understand the importance of prophecy. Um, it says, but test all things. Again, this goes back to prayer. Um, as you hear certain people prophesy, not certain, if you hear anybody prophesy, doesn't matter who it is, whether you are fond of them or not, test it against the Bible, number one, and then also have the conversation with God and ask him, God, is this what you're trying to say, right? Confirm it with the spirit, right? Um, hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Again, if I fear God, if I revere God, if I respect God in the way that I should, I understand that he cannot have evil in his presence. Just as when you walk into someone's house that is very clean and pristine and they ask you to take their shoes off and you know this is a clean person, you respect that house enough to take your shoes off because you understand that you don't want to track mud and dirt or whatever from outside into the house, right? In the same way, we should respect God and his presence enough as he's always with us. We should respect his presence enough to understand that I have to stay away from evil because evil cannot exist in his presence, right? There is grace there is plenty of grace, right? But as a as a believer, I understand and I respect. I, I it may be that I'm able to do it, but understand that if I want to really respect God out of the love that I should have for him and the love that he has for me, then I'm going to resist when evil comes my way. I'm going to resist the temptation to do the things that I know I shouldn't be doing. Right. Because I understand that I, that, that I serve and I, and I'm living with a holy God who doesn't want anything but good for me. Right. But he can't have evil in his presence. I understand that that evil, that sin is what separates me from God. Right. And so what uh, separates me in not permanently, but separates me in, in that it, it creates a, a division. Um, it creates a division between me and God. And so I understand that I have to stay away from those things in order to um, continue to, to 
live joyfully in his presence, right? Um, and, and so uh, I, I wrap all those things up in that because I, uh, if we are respecting and fearing and revering God in the way that we should, those are all things that, um, that, that we will be able to handle correctly, all right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so we got love and respect the laborers and the leaders. Hold your brothers and sisters accountable. Encourage the discouraged. Help the weak. Be patient. Be joyful. Pray. Fear God. Number nine, be aware of the Holy Spirit. Um, this goes back to, again, verses 19 through 21. Don't stifle the spirit. Don't despise prophecies, but test all things. Um, I, I think um, the church, again, we have to be more aware of the Holy Spirit. Um, I, I think if as we begin to uh, be more aware of the Holy Spirit and his leadings uh, and we deny ourselves and our feelings and what, however we feel about a situation or how we feel we should go about certain things, I believe we'll see growth in the church. I believe we'll see spiritual growth and not saying growth in just number, but I'm talking about real spiritual growth where we have more mature Christians and not so many um babes in Christ kind of walking around because as we understand the importance of, of, of being aware of the Holy Spirit and following his leading, things are done in order and decency in the way that he has called us to do them. And there's less argument. I mean, I would be ecstatic to see less argument between churches and people and Christians in general about how certain things should be done. Here's the thing. That the argument can be settled, every argument can be settled at this very point. What does the Bible have to say about it? And how is the spirit lead in that moment? That's it. If you follow those two things, if you follow what the Bible has to say about whatever you're talking about, and you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, the true leading of the Holy Spirit, you, you're, you're good. You're gold. It doesn't matter. Everything else outside of that doesn't matter. Right. Because we have his word and we have his spirit to tell us and to confirm and illuminate the things in his word to tell us how to now move about. Right. So be aware of the Holy Spirit. And number 10 um, is is uh, interesting. Um, so let's go back over love and respect leaders and laborers. Hold your brothers and sisters accountable. Encourage the discouraged. Help the weak. Be patient, be joyful, pray, fear God, be aware of the Holy Spirit, and finally, be holy. Um, and now, uh, when I say be holy, understand what the word holy means. The word holy means set apart, different, right? Um, set apart specifically for God's purpose, right? So um, as a church, I think, uh, again, the universal church, the body of Christ, as a church, if we are, um, if we are, trying our best doing everything we can being intentional about intentional about daily uh daily being intentional there we go daily being intentional about trying to be set apart from things that are not of god uh, if we follow after how he's told us to be set apart i mean it's literally listed here and then obviously a million other places in the bible but if we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit to be set apart in a way that we should be set apart, again, I believe we'll see so much more spiritual growth in our uh, in today's you know Christian body, um, because th there's a certain level again of reverence that we have to have for God and understand that He's not trying to keep us from something good by telling us to be holy, right? He's not trying to shun us from any type from some type of pleasure that we should be having because he told us to be holy, right? He's telling us to be holy because he has a purpose and he wants to use us in a way that is going to be much powerful than any amount of, you know, small momentary pleasure that we might get from doing something that he would not call holy, right? Um, and then what's really awesome about this um, um, in verse 23, as he gives this kind of end to his letter, he says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ he who calls you is faithful he will do it i think this is cool because after this last charge he he explains um in this kind of ending to his to his letter that it's not through our own power that we do this right 
it says the God of peace himself sanctify you, right? Sanctify is to be made holy. So as he's, he's talking about being holy, he talks about staying away from every kind of evil. Uh, as he's talking about being holy, he also tells you that you don't have to do it by yourself. <laughs> You know, you don't have to, it's not a, a thing that, that you have to, that it's totally reliant on you. You have the spirit of God, the God of peace himself that will sanctify you completely, that will keep your whole spirit, soul, and body blameless at the coming of the Lord, right? Um, and so I, I just, I, I really appreciate that part of the letter because he, he he just spells out right after like be holy but understand that it's god who's keeping you holy right um and so those are the 10 charges um and, and um and those are the 10 charges and, and like i said i believe that if we as a church will hold on to these things and begin to input these things in our daily lives as Christians, as we go about our day, no matter who we're interacting with, number one, we'll be showing the love of Christ. We'll be showing the love of Christ. And that is what we are commanded, commanded to do as the body of Christ. Um, but also we're going to see ourselves grow spiritually and we're going to be able to pour out and help others to grow spiritually and mature spiritually um, because we are doing the will of God. All right. So um, uh, just as a closing thought, the church must allow God to sanctify our hearts so that we may be the light that points to the only one who can save us. Right. Um, and, 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 and I think it's it's really important, like I said, that we hang on to these things. Um, and, and again, this is not an exhaustive list of everything that you have to do. But here's the thing. Again, we go back to be aware of the Holy Spirit. Um, you may not get an exhaustive list of everything that you have to do, um, but the Bible gives enough principles in it. Right. That will. If we live by those things and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, we'll be in the will of God. We'll be doing what he has for us. He'll be we'll be doing um, what he's purposed us for and we'll be the light that he has called us to be. So I hope um, that you were able to get something out of this. I hope I didn't go too fast, um, but um, I hope you were able to get something out of this. I hope that the spirit of God illuminates something to you. Go back and read the passage um, and find find some things for yourself. Read the whole chapter. Go out and, and, and I, I encourage you to study this thing study Paul's epistles study all of these these places where God is where, where God has inspired the authors of the Bible to give some principles that we can live by especially now in modern day times um but go out and, and study these things and find what the spirit is saying to you but this is just a couple of things that I feel like the spirit was saying uh to me so um again I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share um the word of God with you guys thank you Pastor Tank thank you Didi thank you Reach for all you guys have done to help us we will um continue to be praying for you as I know you guys are praying for us um we love you guys, and uh, hopefully we get to see you guys soon on our, our next trek back up to Cleveland. All right? See you guys later.
social media ads on Instagram, on Facebook, and please subscribe to us on YouTube. We'll see you next time.